This is a Surface 604 V Rook, and it's called that because it sort of looks like a V right here, the frame. Super approachable, much lower standover height than obviously a high step, but even the, the older Rook, it had a second tube here. It wasn't just a single tube, it, it sort of had two, and that gave it some, some stiffness, some strength, uh, but of course it raised the standover height by, you know, I'm kind of guessing six inches if you measure from here it's like you know it's almost a foot um but most people you're kind of in this area I, i'm really impressed with the bike they were very thoughtful in how they uh, reinforced the frame you can see down here this is a hydroform seat tube that flares out a little bit and then we've got a little cross brace right there if we come to the other side of the frame you can see that 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 down tube it's raised a little bit and it connects with the bottom bracket as well as a good portion of that seat tube so the bike is fairly stiff and it comes in two sizes which to me is awesome especially when you've got a, a bike that's you know 25.99 pretty affordable and that's us dollars so two frame sizes three colors this is a matte white they've got matte black and then matte flamingo pink which is really fun there is still some frame flex you know if you're if you're on it you're standing up maybe you have the racks all loaded up 50 pounds back there up to 20 pounds in the front but still they're they're kind of doing the best they can anytime you're on a wave like deep step through there's a little bit of a compromise there so i you know i want to be honest about that i've been enjoying the bike and i've actually ridden off road here a bit and it's very comfortable we've got this sr suntour xct30 and that means 30 millimeter steel stanchions up here, a little bit thicker. And so you just get this nice glide, adjustable compression over here. You can lock it out as well as preload. So if you are a heavier rider, maybe you get that medium large frame, you can compress the spring and you won't be bottoming out. But I, I do really like the performance of this thing and hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors, dual piston calipers, brake levers with adjustable reach. And hydraulic just means you don't have to squeeze quite as hard, especially for the rear brake. Because if these were mechanical brakes, that rear brake line has to travel farther and it can kind of get gunned up over time and just kind of set in. So I'm a big fan of hydraulic. And these ones are excellent because they have motor inhibitors built in meaning it, it overrides the motor so you're not fighting against the bike at any time and they activate the rear light it kind of has a flashing mode just to give you a little bit more kind of enhanced safety as you're riding you'll also notice especially with this white frame it's, it's highly visible and the tires have reflective sidewall stripes so just a lot of i think even even this right here on the plastic chain cover just a lot of additional safety up here on the headlight there's sort of a side window as well as that front facing and it's up high it's at the stem sort of the handlebar area versus being way down here could potentially get blocked by the rack and be bouncing around if it was on that that suspension fork arch these are choices a lot of other e-bikes in this price range make and and i love that how thoughtful this was how they upgraded it and and they've really enhance the experience. Back to these tires, Surface 604 branded. They've got three millimeters of Kevlar puncture protection built in. These are 27.5 by 2.4. So 2.4 width, that's a good width. And when you look at this, you'll notice that, yeah, it's gonna give you some stability, maybe a little bit of additional comfort because there's more air volume and air is kind of squishy. And with 27.5, but a taller 2.4 inch tire, you get, a lower attack angle so you're getting a smoother ride it just sort of travels over and across cracks and bumps instead of ramming into them with like a smaller wheel size i just i really like the bike i think it's very thoughtfully done um, of course surface 604 does have the colt which is their high step version of the bike and in terms of approachability whether you're a guy or a gal or or whoever being able to approach it so easily and have so much utility these are 65 millimeter aluminum alloy fenders they're not uh, steel they're not going to rust if they get scratched we do have like this little plastic cuff instead of bolting directly to the lowers so that's a bit of a compromise but they're so sturdy and wide and it, th these stays here that support them they bolt in such a way that they aren't going to poke or scratch you they sort of mount under the fender you also see that with like the hub here it's black the thicker 13 gauge spokes are black the rims a little bit wider this is a samox 
sturdy hollow spindle at the bottom bracket here. So it's a little bit of an upgraded part. These are sealed bearings for the bottom bracket and the headset, that's straight inch and an eighth. And down here, these are 170 millimeter standard length crank arms with Welgo name brand platform pedals. I appreciate that. They're wider, they get good traction, got reflectors built in. And the drivetrain itself, if we look back here, this is Shimano Alivio. So this is a really, you know, they spent a little bit of extra money. It's gonna shift smoother. It's a nine speed, you get quite a few steps there. It's not just like a seven speed. And I believe this is like nickel plated. It's, it's a nicer cassette. So it's gonna maybe not rust quite as much and not attract dirt and wear out as quickly is what I'm trying to get across. 11 to 34 or 36 tooth, it kind of depends on the parts that are available. Both of those are an upgrade. A lot of times you'll see like 11 to 32 or even 14 to 28 on some of those seven speeds. So this is really good. Got a nice little barrel adjuster. There is the power uh, cable that goes towards the motor back here. A little bit exposed. Okay, it'd be nice if there was like a derail your guard or something to shield this, but the wires are tucked in fairly well. In fact, all across the bike, we've got internal routing. Maybe it's, you know, up here, it's not like routed through the stem or anything, but then it pretty quickly goes into that down tube and then out of the bottom bracket. We did have a quick disconnect as well. So if you need to do some rear wheel maintenance or fix a flat at some point, you can just quickly unplug it. And then we have a torque sensor back here as well. So this is not a cadence sensing electric bike. It, it senses how hard you're pedaling. It, and that's much more dynamic. It feels more natural. And it's, I think it's a little more exciting. It's gonna be a little bit more efficient too because it encourages you to contribute. Of course, you can adjust the level of pedal assist. And I think now in, in the display, you can set it to have like three levels of assist, five or nine. And so you can change the increments between the levels. But in any case, what I'm trying to say is with a torque sensor, it's just a little bit more natural uh, ride experience. This motor, it's a Bafang. This is a 500 to 750 watt rated motor. So 500 watt nominal, it's black. It blends in really well. Uh, fairly high torque motor. All of that said, you do have a taller wheel with a bigger tire. In my experience, it's been very satisfying, especially with a 48 volt system. So the battery pack here, this is the standard 48 volt, 14 amp hour pack, but they also have an optional upgrade it's 20 amp hour. So you can get a significantly higher capacity battery. Just insert the Reension branded key there, pull on this little lever, and then slide it off like that. 7.7 .7 pounds for this stock battery. It's like 10 pounds for the other one. So 672 watt hours, get pretty decent range. And there's a little USB plug right there as well. The power button on top and the charge port on the other side. I'm just gonna put this back on the frame. This is a metal housing, so it's fairly tough if you were to kick it or scrape it over time. It's black. Uh, you know, it's gonna look really nice on that black frame. Even on the white frame with all the black accents, it kind of blends in. But I'm grateful that the charging port, at least it's a little bit higher than the crank arm. So if you're plugged in, you're not gonna make contact. And if you do take that off to charge it at the office or at home or something, they've got this compact two amp pound and a half on this charger. That's pretty good. But they also have a four amp charger, so a fast charger which is excellent if you get that higher capacity battery pack if you upgrade to that 20 amp hour battery pack it's not quite as slim it sort of spills out a little bit on the left side it's not quite as symmetrical but for that increased capacity uh, and you know it weighs a couple more pounds but it can still be a really good thing and I actually like how the the charging port is way up high versus a little bit lower on the other pack another cool upgrade with the higher capacity battery pack is it's using the 21700 cells versus 18650. So there's a higher capacity, higher energy density. Being able to take the battery off the bike and store it in a cool, dry location, keeping that battery between 20 and 80% full is gonna help it last longer. Extreme heat is hard on lithium ion batteries. You're just not gonna get as many full charge cycles. And extreme cold is gonna temporarily stunt your range. I've heard that if the battery is freezing, you don't wanna plug it in and charge it. You want it to be kind of like a neutral temperature. These are all tips from the road. Uh, but in addition to that charging port here on the battery, we have another one at the base of the display. So that is just awesome, especially because people will ride with their smartphones for GPS or maybe have a little speaker, additional lights or something. But of course, I love that it comes with integrated lights. 
So before I boot that up, we've got this nice Sully Royale Ascenza Plus saddle, feels really good. 30.4 millimeter seat post diameter, and they do sell suspension seat posts, so then you'd have like a full suspension feel, since you've already got a suspension fork up there. Nice pannier hangers on this rear rack and a platform on top for a maybe like a trunk bag or child seat or something. And then we've got bungee loops at the bottom. It's just really well done. And you can't take the rack off. A lot of times I'll see e-bikes where it's, it's just kind of a bolted on uh, rear rack and there's more optionality there to remove it. But the upside is that it's very sturdy and it's color matched to the frame. Now this bike weighs about 67 and a half pounds. I weighed it just a minute ago back at the shop and that's kind of a lot. But then you think about it, it actually it's about five, six pounds heavier than the older just regular Rook, even though this is a single tube. And I think it's because of the reinforcements on the frame. And then they've got this additional front rack that comes with the bike, which you can remove. This one's black versus white. It's got kind of a bamboo deck. Again, probably, you know, it's like a 20 pound uh, weight rating on this. It's not going to tip as easily when you're steering or parking. It's bolted directly to the frame. So that's the right way to do it. But you can see that it's a little bit crowded with the, the cables and everything up here. It's kind of a, it's a cute thing, but that's part of what's adding additional weight. I want to point out, this is the small medium frame and it's got like a 90 millimeter stem portion here versus 110 millimeters and a shorter handlebar width. So they did sort of right size this depending on which frame you get. And if you look at that base, it elevates the the handlebar a little bit. So it gives you this really nice upright, almost Dutch body position when you're cruising around the neighborhood, looking around at the sights and sounds, talking to your friends and that adjustability here, you can go a little bit more aggressive or you can have it up sort of like we have now for that just really comfortable body position. These are ergonomic grips. They feel fairly good. They're they're a little hard, they're firm, but they're, they're decent. And this swept back handlebar, we've got the flick bell, and then the trigger shifters with a little optical window that some people like because you can get an idea for what gear you're in. You do have to use your pointer finger to go to a higher gear. I kind of wish I could use my thumb for both, but that's just what you get at the Shimano Alivio group set level. I already mentioned how much I like that headlight. Just giving you another look at these brake levers and stuff. And then back here, but the kickstand, it's adjustable length and we got a 40 millimeter tab and it stays clear of the pedal so you don't get pedal lock or anything. I think that's a, that's a pretty good look. Maybe just jump in and power this puppy on. Oh yeah, I do want to call out their quick release lever for the, for the seat post. This is, this is pretty nice. It's a little bit longer. I just found it easier to adjust the seat height, which is great if you're sharing the bike or just trying to get it set up right. So once the battery is all charged up and mounted to the frame, press the power button here for a couple of seconds and you get that nice branding. It's a color display, Surface 604. You can swivel it forward and back a little bit, but it's not removable. It stays with the bike. Battery percentage, so very precise. Gotta love that. And then we've got this little speedometer. It shows your power level and also how, how fast you're going. And so power is going to surge based on how much the motor is activating. And that's partially dependent on pedal assist, but we also have a trigger throttle, which is nice. I find there's a little bit of reaching involved to, to mess with the display because you're, you're kind of butting up against the brake and you know, then you have to reach, but you know, at some point it gets kind of crowded in the cockpit if you've got a, a trigger throttle. And this is really nice to have, just lets you get started more easily without having to pedal and then stabilize yourself or catch up to a friend or just take a break if you get kind of get uh, far from home. So we got trip distance and odometer. If we press the I button, we can cycle through different readouts. We got max speed, average speed, time, odometer, and it just kind of cycles back around. And then those different levels of assist, we can go to zero. It cuts the throttle and everything. So you're just completely like on a bike with lights or go one, two, three, four, five. And that's where we max out. Five is the default. And there's the, the throttle, pretty smooth. Nice, take that back. And uh, the other neat thing that they, they did recently is if you press this dedicated light button, get a light icon and they purposely left the display bright because they said a lot of people are riding during the day with their lights on and before it automatically dimmed the display, which is good for not ruining your night vision, but then you can't see it at, at, in the daytime, which is kind of bummer. So upgraded uh, Bouchelle Shiny 120 headlight, again, aimable 120 Lux, and then two LED rear light. Let's do the brake lights here. There we go. There's the blinking. 
just to get a little bit more attention, try to help you be extra safe. And then there's also a settings menu here. So if I hold plus and minus, we can get in here to display settings and you can change from metric to imperial. You can manually adjust the brightness of the display and that's where it's up to you. If, you, if it's at night and you don't wanna ruin your night vision, you still have that option. This is dormancy, how quickly it turns off, uh, percentage, trip reset, sensitivity, assist levels. This is what I was talking about. You can go, you know, zero to maybe one to five, zero to five, one to three. There, there are a lot of options in there. Uh, voltage, and there's a password, so you can password protect your bike and then just go back. And even more settings in here under advanced. Wheel size, speed limit. Oh yeah, you can take this from a 20 mile per hour class two electric bike and make it like 26 miles per hour. Go a little bit faster, maybe off road, something like that. It's cool that Surface 604 sort of leaves their bikes a little bit more open uh, in that, that sense there. Gives you some freedom. And that's it. So let's hop on this thing and take a little ride. Just step right through, nice and easy. Stabilize the frame. I usually pick this foot up and set it and then get on the saddle here. And then I can just ease off, just using using the throttle, get my balance. It's really nice. I'm in pedal assist level five right now, so I don't have to push very hard for that torque sensor to kick in. And then the max speed is at full capacity. I can go up to 20 miles per hour the way it's set right now. And I, I can definitely feel that it gives me more power when I push harder because of that torque sensor. No problem riding off road here. That suspension fork adding a little bit of comfort. Those fenders are keeping me dry and clean a little bit wet and we've got some debris out here. It can be a little funky at first when you, you turn and you don't see that front rack turn, but that really is the best way to do it because it mounts directly to the frame. It's a lot sturdier. It doesn't impact your steering. It's really not a whole lot of rattling either, which is great. Those fenders and everything are really done well. do the no hands thing. Sometimes on these deep step through frames, I'll notice like a little bit of speed wobble. So there's like a shimmy that happens through the frame, but this one's feeling pretty solid. I mean, again, there's, there's a little bit of frame flex happening, but it's not uh, really not too bad. Okay guys, I'm gonna use pedal assist five and show you how this responds, how quickly the motor activates and then cuts out when I stop pushing. And the motor is completely independent of the chain and the, the drivetrain. So if you did drop the chain or if you had some issue, it really wouldn't be a problem. Uh, the bike could still limp home. By the way, this is a 42 tooth steel, just regular chain ring. This is beautiful. <laughs> Really smooth. It's great. I love it. Left. Hey there. Which way? Okay. The bigger tires and suspension fork here. Oh, like back back there. Glad I got some fenders going on. 
Yeah, that is nice. I, I like that. That's that's actually really cool. It's a big park. <laughs> well, this thing, yeah. <laughs> this is nice. Wow. Beautiful. pretty well thank you so much well guys that's about it that is the surface 604 v rook for the full written review check out electricbikereview.com measured all the specs and stuff by hand i got to talk to the company founder and one of their their lead designers on this pretty neat to see again two sizes three colors 25.99 not too bad uh, i also have a compare tool back at the site so you could look at the like the older regular rook and you know back to back this has the the upgraded like little front rack and improved light and stuff but otherwise they, they share a lot of similarities and then there's a forum so you can ask other people what the best accessories and stuff are i love you ride safe out there we'll see you later